Hi everybody, my name is Nicholas Powers with Aero Electronics and today we're talking about some tech trivia. And I'm not going to go super deep into the technology behind this, but I wanted to cover what the heck does it mean when something says it is 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit, or 64-bit, or even 128-bit in the future. When we're talking specifically about microcontrollers and microprocessors, well, that can refer to the data bus width, the addressing width, so kind of how many different unique memory addresses can it understand, or the register width. And the register width is really how much data can you manipulate at once. With an 8-bit microprocessor, it is treated as 2 to the 8th, so that is 255 unique numbers. So 0 through 255, because it's 2 to the 8th minus 1. Or if you move to 16-bit, that is actually 65,000 approximate. And if you move up to 32-bit, you're in the 4.3 million range. So as you want to work on larger and larger numbers, you actually need greater register widths so that you can actually deal with them, or register lengths. When you're dealing with the 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit, 64-bit in the memory addressing space, it's actually something we ran into recently with computer memory. All of our personal computers generally were based around the 32-bit microprocessor. That meant it could address 2 to the 32nd unique memory spaces. This limited us to an effective about 4 gigabytes of RAM. Realistically, it was around 3.25 gigabytes of RAM. Now moving into the 64-bit realm, it actually allows us terabytes of RAM. So huge amounts of fast storage that we can use for working with programs. Now, some of the history about the 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit microprocessors is actually the first 8-bit microprocessor that I really know of is the Intel 8008. It was produced in 1972. It was the first general purpose 8-bit microprocessor microcontroller. And then what's really interesting is it didn't take very long for the world to get to 16-bit, 32-bit, and 64-bit. In fact, the Cray-1 supercomputer was using 64-bit uh, register length, so it could manipulate huge amounts of data. And that was in the 70s and 80s. But it actually only had a 32-bit memory addressing space, so it was still limited to the um, gigabytes of RAM, which in that day and age was an enormous amount of memory. Now you might be wondering yourself, okay, so this affects the amount of data that a processor can manipulate, it affects the amount of memory that it can address, but at the end of the day, what does it really matter? Well, since everything, the majority of parts you're working on nowadays are 32-bit or 64-bit, where it actually comes into differences are the unique instruction sets implemented on each processor. So typically you have your add, your multiply, subtract, divide functions, but then you get into unique situations where you have a RISC or a CISC processor. This is a reduced instruction set or complex instruction set processors. A reduced instruction set processor breaks up the actions that manipulate memory, so translating from a register to the memory, versus the register to register actions. So these commands won't all do one, or they won't do everything in just one go. They will first manipulate the registers and then put that back into memory or then pull it out of memory. Whereas complex instruction set microprocessors, those would be like your x86 ones, so what you would expect from Intel or AMD. Those ones can do memory manipulation and memory storage or retrieval in the same instruction. So it's just a different way to think about it. And right now, the majority of our phones, our embedded devices, all of those are on reduced instruction set microprocessors and microcontrollers. One of the reduced instruction set styles of computing would be the ARM microprocessor. ARM is a company out of the UK that helps to design microchips and micro, micro architectures and helps to specify exactly which instructions will be present within the code that people can rely on for doing data manipulation. It is a reduced instruction set style of um, implementation. So one set does memory, another does manipulation. They don't all do one at once. But ARM microarchitecture is probably the most common one you're familiar with. It's present in our phones, it's present in all of our embedded devices. And it is a set of known instructions and architectures that everybody, well, that all ARM licensees can implement in their own chips. So what I've got here is I've actually got a Freescale uh, Kinetis M0 Plus. This is actually an ARM M0 Plus micro -arch architecture that Freescale has implemented on their chip. So it follows the instruction set for the ARM M0 Plus. So when you've got M0 Pluses, generally all M0 Pluses have a subset of 
a subset of instructions that they will all have in common. They all have similar behaviors and pretty similar performance, but different implementations will result in better power savings or other things. I also have the tried and true Arduino Uno. It has an Atmel uh, ATmega 328P on it. That's an 8-bit reduced instruction set microprocessor. And then when we get into the world of much more powerful things, this is the brand new Raspberry Pi 3. Well, I guess it's not brand new anymore, but it's still pretty new. This has a Broadcom chipset on it. It's actually a 64-bit ARM-based microarchitecture. So it can handle much higher amounts of memory and much larger numbers that it can crunch. Well, thanks for joining me for this dive into the kind of the fundamentals, the basics on what the difference is between 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit, 64-bit microcontrollers. And at the end of the day, the takeaway is the higher the number, the more data you can manipulate and the more instructions you can use. So thanks for joining me. And if you'd like more content like this, feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit us at arrow.com.